The last example of this first section on theoretical end games is again against Arthur Biscay. Bobby is with black to move. He has a strong extra protected pass pawn on h3, but the problem is that there are no direct roads to invade Biscay's fortress. What did Bobby play? Black to move and win. Bishop takes e4. Opening roads is more important than the bishop. And of course, this also creates the additional passed e pawn. But Bobby had to calculate precisely that he'll always come first. Uh, there, yeah. Okay, I don't think this is right. After bishop c6, he could even, even take here to stop any possible counterplay. Yeah, and now white can take the king side pawns, but um, this doesn't help. Black's king comes to d2, and then e or c pawn will queen, and it's over. And also good is, of course, that the pawn, black pawn will queen with check. As we will see, here it is not so relevant, here it's just a nice feature, but it, it will be relevant in the game. Bobby directly <coughs> goes for the c-pawn, now e4. Yeah, and his pass pawn overload will overload White's defense. And after king e2, Biscaya resigned. But in the variation after g5, it's of course relevant that Black's c-pawn queens with check. And then Black can of course stop the g-pawn and win. And after bishop g2, okay, white, Black's pawns will win. Anyway, of course, as they cannot be stopped on one and the same diagonal, the bishop is overloaded and cannot stop the uh, both of them. Okay, this was a short look into a few theoretical endgames. Bobby knew this theory very well. He had even studied Soviet material in the original Russian language. And he was also helped, of course, by the fact that he always fought to the end and had a great level of energy and concentration always to really pose the most difficult problems to the opponent so that he was often rewarded. In the next section on rook endings, I will of course also deal with a few um, theoretical rook endings first.